A lot of trouble. And Richie, remind me of your question again. Uh, one of the one of the comments oh, that kept flu, going. Yeah, yeah, the seasonal flu. I already know the answer, but you guys can probably say it a little bit more eloquently than I. So have at it. Yeah, sure. So you know, one thing to just say is that because um, the germ theory has been accepted without proof, um, all of the research into things like the flu are based around the germ theory. Uh, you know, stating that it's caused by a virus. And it's really important to point out because many people may not know this, that all of the tests that they have, right? Because there is a flu test that they do use sometimes in the United States only for the purpose of uh, being able to justify a prescription for an antiviral drug. And they have tests for many other viruses, but not one of these tests measures a virus directly. They all measure other markers that have not really been compared to measuring the virus. So many of the tests are antibody tests. So they're they're very inaccurate and and really don't don't mean anything. So be beware, you know, and I, I thought this was awfully weird when I was in medical school because, you know, if there was a bacterial problem, you could get a sample and do a bacterial culture and then identify the exact species of bacteria that's present. And while they might, that may not show that it causes the disease, at least it matches a bacteria to a disease. So you could see maybe that's the right kind of bacteria to clean up that particular problem. But with virus tests, I remember the first time, oh, we should get a virus culture, right? So we can actually show that the virus is present there, but uh, there is no such test. And I was just told that, oh, it's too difficult to perform. And that was the reason why uh, it's not used that way. So it's really quite interesting. So what the real cause of the influenza, uh, there's not, you would not be able to find research uh, articles describing an experiment to prove this because um, no effort has been paid to this kind of research, but you can look in traditional medicine systems um, like in Chinese medicine or Ayurvedic medicine or others and can find various explanations for things like this. And interestingly, in uh, traditional Chinese medicine and Ayurvedic medicine, which is Indian, um, they had no uh, theory about contagion. Like they didn't believe that people pass illnesses back and forth between each other. And, uh, you know, we've grown up with germ theory and we've grown up with that belief, but it's interesting that other cultures who have observed the same phenomena of, you know, sometimes people getting sick at the same time, uh, but have a different explanation. So what I think the flu and colds are is basically part of an annual renewal cycle that um, most systems in our bodies work on a cyclical basis, right? Like we're familiar with night and day uh, cycles. And it's even been shown that uh, our individual organs have their own kind of clock mechanism where they can define cycles. And we have seasonal cycles, right? And we see this in all kinds of organisms, right? Especially in the plant world. Uh, that uh, the physiology and uh, changes over the seasons. So we breathe through our upper airway, our nose, mouth, throat, and lungs um, all year long. And in the air we breathe, there are all types of particles and pollutants uh, that get into our system. And many of these are actually manufactured by us and didn't exist in the natural world in the past. And I think that's why we have probably have more of these illnesses today than we may have had 500 years ago. But since all of these particulates and contaminants uh, from air pollution and other uh, sources are basically go through this whole airway system and we have all these things to filter them out, like there's little hairs um, inside of our nose, there's like waves of bone that increase the surface area. And the purpose is to clean all these things out of the air before it gets into your lungs so you can have good ex gas exchange and you, these things don't enter the inside of your body. But over the course of a year, there's damage to these tissues as a result of this process of filtering. And just think about, you know, other 
types of filters that we have, we have to change the filter, uh, you know, over a period of time because it, it reaches its capacity. So essentially what we're having is uh, a filter change in our upper airway. And uh, so the tissue starts to slough off and um, that generates a response from our immune system and from and it calls on the bacteria to come and clean up the tissues and do their recycling. And that's when we experience the symptoms because uh, that has causes inflammation so that there could be more blood flow to the area to clear away the debris. And it causes secretions, which clear those toxins and debris out of our body. And essentially that's what a flu is. And, and it happens on a seasonal basis because we have seasonal cycles and maybe it makes sense for it to occur in the fall and winter. And I think the reason why sometimes people might get it at the same time is basically because when you're around someone and you experience their experience, then uh, it might cause your body to start that program of annual renewal. And then you'll go through that process. And once that process goes to completion, essentially all of the tissues inside your upper airway have now been renewed and replaced and are ready to keep doing their job. Yeah, I think, I think there's another couple of things to come out of all that. And that is because uh, in our research, we found, uh, particularly with things, as, as you say, Rishi, about uh, seasonal things that seem to appear around certain times of the year. And... Uh, we looked into uh, and suggest if you look into what's actually happening in your area at that particular time and quite often it may let's say it may be in a period and particularly in, if you're in farming areas that's uh, when they start to spray the fields either with the fertilizers or pesticides or herbicides so so have a look what's um, have a look what's um, excuse me <laughs> Oh my, stand by. Um, so yeah, there we, go. there we go. It's to have a look what's going off in your area. And um, you may find, as we did, that that's uh, actually call, causing what the authorities are causing uh, a seasonal disease. And well, many years ago yeah. when polio was sort of rife, um, when we investigated that, um, we found that, uh, yeah, sure enough in those at those particular times, um, lots of DDT spraying. I mean, I know DDT is banned in most places now because it's extremely toxic. But at those times, it was sprayed around uh, as an insecticide and uh, was sort of pur <laughs> purported to be good for you. You know, they spray people with it as well. So highly surprising then that you get uh, large numbers of people becoming very ill. Um, so it, it's quite important to have a look what's happening in your area. Once you know that it's nothing to do with the germ, then you know it's something else. It's a case of investigating what that is. But the other thing to remember as well, and uh, alluding to what uh, Andy was saying, is uh, for most people, when they get those, what we refer to as cold symptoms, you know, you're sort of getting extra catarrh, uh, maybe sore throat, headaches, um, it's... It, it's invariably the body going through a detox system. Those are sort of natural symptoms for when your body's detoxing. But I have to say that if you've got a healthy body, because um, your body detoxes naturally all the time, it's only if you get a, a, a buildup of toxins that then you get the more extreme detoxification symptoms um, because the, the body is trying to use all of its systems, including the uh, mucous membranes, to try and get the uh, toxins out of your system. But and that's you... another reason for a fever. Um, it raises the body's temperature. Um, so, you know, you, you're sweating and that's another way of releasing toxins through the skin. Yeah. Um, so sort of rashes and boils and blisters and associated, uh, that get associated with various diseases, they're, they're not. It's, there's, as we point out in the book, there's not lots of different diseases. There's just lots of different symptoms. Uh, the basic causes are the same, uh, which we boil down to these four things, uh, which we talk about in the book. Um, and all of them work through the mechanism of free radicals in the body. Uh, the body produces free radicals naturally on a daily basis, um, just being alive. But they're cleared out through the body naturally, providing you look after your body properly, that you eat, you 
with your nutritional intake of uh, nutrients and vitamins and minerals, antioxidants basically, the more colorful your food is uh, and fresher it is, the more uh, antioxidants there are in it. Um, and they, your body will act normally to, uh, the antioxidants will clear out the free radicals. But if they're left to their own devices, the free radicals that is, they will attack tissue, they damage tissue. Um, so that it is important um, that they are cleared out. But if you do get in excess of these, and your body's trying to detox, um, you, you'll have what people refer to as a cold, these cold symptoms. But it's not because you've caught a virus, it's your body detoxing. So people need to understand what their body's doing and what their body's telling them. It's a natural process. Um, but as I say, we talk about that in a lot more detail in the book. Um, <laughs> forgive me if I keep saying that, but it, it's an 800 page book and uh, we can't explain it's it all. in a very, in very hours. intense book. It's large. I've, I'm only on chapter one. I only got it two days ago, but I'm still on chapter mm -hmm. one because I've reread paragraph after paragraph because of all the barium, strontium, aluminum, etc., genetically modified food, fluoride that I've ingested over the years. I have to read things more than once to comprehend. <laughs> but speaking of what you said, I didn't realize this. When you said when you when people are sick, seasonal, etc., look what's happening in your environment. Just yeah. recently traveling across the country, out in Wyoming, out in the West, watching them burning the fields is amazing because it's a daily thing. And the smoke going up in the sky is clearly chemical burn. Mm. It's white smoke because everybody's dumping Monsanto fertilizer, weed killer, et cetera, and then they burn it off and everybody ingests it. And it's a real problem. I didn't realize that. We don't necessarily have that on the East Coast. Yeah. But middle America and out West, it's rampant. It's absolutely yeah. rampant. Yeah. Uh, well, I, and and it, it can explain a lot, you know, look what's happening in your environment. And, and that's without mentioning things like uh, uh, geoengineering, chemtrails, you know, I mean, what, what is being sprayed out of those things, you know? Um, it's not good stuff, you know, and I know a lot of people think it's just a conspiracy theory, but, you know... No, not here, they don't. No, <laughs> anyone who knows about jet engines will know that what's happening out of those engines is not natural. So they're spraying something, and you can bet your life it's not good for, for the people. You remember the old days before massive propaganda when, when, when NASA app actually gave us the Appleman chart? And you could actually look up how a turbine, a jet turbine engine from Rolls Royce, Pratt and Whitney, GE worked. It expels nothing. Yeah, that's that's part of the jet turbine process. These days, yeah. they leave them from horizon to horizon. Yeah, I'll I mean, tell you what. During this 2020 pandemic, the chemtrailing has been a minimal. But yesterday, here in Massachusetts, it was off the. It was insane how badly they sprayed. They blocked the sun right out like that. But yeah. I digress. Well, we noticed the same thing that there was a real, hardly anything spraying in the sky at all during the first parts of the lockdown. And then as it's been eased off, then sure enough, they're back again, you know. And that might be connected to what they think is going to be a second wave, you know. Well, yeah, if you're going to spray people with poison, what do you expect? But they're going to have symptoms. They're going to have symptoms, aren't they? Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's a real thing. And, uh, you know, if people watch the skies closely enough, they'll see some jet planes in similar sorts of heights with quite clean exhausts. You know, there's nothing coming from the back of them. And that's how it should be. And then you'll get these others come over again, as much as you can estimate at the same height at the same time. And they're pothering, you know, these thick trails out of the back of them that not only last for hours from horizon to horizon, but they slowly spread out. Um, width ways and form artificial cloud, you know, which can be quite thick and, and, and blocks out the sun. You know, there's nothing natural about that. And you, you don't need to be, shall we say, a rocket scientist to exactly. realize that there's something very wrong with what's happening. I yeah. say that quite often, actually. So I find that humorous. Dr. Kaufman, <laughs> can you can you see this comment? 